Ever seen Tarzan and the Jungle Book? Then you're probably already familiar with the idea of animals raising human children. Well, would you be surprised to know that it might be more fact than fiction? Call them the children of the wild. From a woman who was raised by monkeys to a boy who grew up amongst the animals of the woods, here are 20 kids who got raised by animals. Number 20. Marina Chapman What might perhaps be one of the most fascinating stories you've ever heard is this one about a woman who was abducted and later abandoned. With no one to look after her, she ended up surviving by living with monkeys. So basically, it's like a Tarzan movie, but this time, Jane's the main protagonist. Marina Chapman is probably one of few who can claim to have survived in the rainforest of Colombia even before she reached the age of 10. The story is a relatively sad one. Marina doesn't remember much before her abduction. But she does remember how a group of men knocked her unconscious and placed her in a truck only to abandon her in the forest. For most, that would spell doom, but luckily for Marina, the locals were more than willing to lend the lost girl a hand. The capuchin monkeys are native to the rainforest of Colombia, and Marina claimed that she was saved and raised by a family of them. They taught her to climb trees, to ways of finding foods, how to get at the treats and nuts. One of them even healed her from a terrible illness by having her drink muddy water which made her vomit whatever it was that was making her sick. It took a while, but Marina eventually got rescued and grew up having a family of her own. Before we begin, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Peter the Wild Boy Some people might not fit into a world of people. If those kinds of people exist, then Peter would definitely be one of them. Found in Hertz World Forest by none other than George I and his party of hunters while well, he was headed over to his Hanover homeland, Peter was anything but a civilized little boy. When they found him, he was walking on all fours like an animal and he was certainly behaving like one too. So maybe the whole idea of Mowgli walking like a person was a bit unrealistic. Either way, George just couldn't leave the boy there in the woods, so he took him along with them. Once at London, Peter became the craze of the place, later getting the moniker Peter Peter the Wild Boy. Several attempts were made at trying to teach Peter how to read, write, or even speak, but all of them failed. Till the day he died, the only two words that he could say were his own name, Peter and King George. In case you're wondering what this strange boy looked like, a portrait painting was made of Peter by the artist William Kent. It currently hangs off the wall at the Kensington Palace. Modern professionals have used details from that painting as well as accounts of Peter to determine the boy that most likely suffered from a genetic disorder called Pitt-Hopkins Syndrome. Number 18. Cambodian Jungle Girl This is the story about a woman who spent over 18 years lost in jungles of Cambodia. She was still a little girl when she went missing, being only 8 years old. To survive in one of the wildest jungles on the earth at that age, a feat that earned her the title of the Jungle Woman. Now, while she wasn't swinging from vine to vine like George of the Jungle, she was foraging for food by sneaking into nearby villages. This was ultimately how she got caught by a farmer who spotted her trying to make her way into a nearby village in search of what to eat. This find occurred in the year 2007, and not long after she was taken in by a Cambodian family who thought that she was their missing daughter whom they named Rosham Pinjing. Upon further investigation, it was discovered that she had gone missing in the year 1989. She was only 8 years old at the time, meaning that she spent about a decade alone in the brutal harshness of the jungle. The odds of her surviving were easily against her, but she was able to pull through despite all of that. This reunion, however, wasn't meant to last as a Vietnamese man, age 70, stepped forward with proof that he was Roshan's true father. With teary eyes, the two families part ways with Roshan finally being reunited with their true family. Number 17. Marie Angelique Mimi Leblanc the feral child, Marie-Angelique Memi LeBlanc, easily stands out as one of the most unique of any recorded till date. Her trials and tribulations are unlike the kind you'd see on the big screens, but what might be the most impressive thing about her is her recovery. She was from Canada and was brought to the shores of France by ship. She arrived at Marseille but was the worst possible time. This was during the year 1720 in the year the bubonic plague ravaged France. She was able to flee, escaping not only the plague but also the madness that ensued because of it. Unlike our friend Mowgli and the rest of his wolf brothers and sisters, Marie didn't fit in so well with the wolves of the forest of France. She didn't live alongside them but learned to defend herself from them. According to accounts, 
evidence, she used a club and a spear-like weapon which she probably stole to do this. By the time she was captured, she looked nothing like herself, having very dark skin, clawed fingers and toes, and hair growing wildly from her body. Her eyes would often involuntarily and sporadically dart sideways, a side effect of living a life of alertness for so many years. She was only 9 when she went missing for 10 years. She was able to recover, even learning to read and write, something uncommon amongst feral children. Number 16. Marcos Rodriguez Pantoja Here is a boy who's more like Mowgli, the feral child Marcos Rodriguez Pantoja, although his case might be sadder than the fictional character. From an early age, Marcos had it rough. After he, along with his family, emigrated to Madrid from Enyora, Spain, the place where he was born, his mother died during childbirth. His father ended up getting married to another woman, who already had a child from a previous marriage of her own. As the story tends to go, she maltreated Marcos every chance she got, and the father didn't seem all too bothered by it. Marcos was eventually sold as a slave to a hermetic goat herder who ended up dying, leaving Marcos alone to fend for himself in the forest. He lived secluded from society for many years, only having the wolves to keep him company. When he was found by a civil guard, he was mostly wolf at that point. He even howled, scratched, and bit much like the one the guard tried to move him. Marcos' adaptation to the more civilized world wasn't easy. Despite his impressive intelligence, able to relearn things like how to speak, read and write, and how to use cutleries, Marcos was often the victim of scammers. It seemed he still had a lot to learn about people. Number 15. Shamdeo, India, 1972 Here's another feral child who could give Mowgli a run for his money. Shamdeo is often referred to by those who know him as the Wolf Boy. He was only four years old when he was found in a forest in India. It's unknown how long he'd been there, but considering how not completely human he was when he was found, we could safely say that he was there for a really, really long time. His skin was dark from being exposed to the harsh elements for so long. His nails were curved like hooks, almost as though he had the claws of an animal rather than the nails of a human being. His teeth were even reported to have been pointed just like animals. It's hard to say how true this was or what could have caused it, assuming it was true. There were calluses on his arms and feet. His skin was very dark and he had sharpened teeth, long hooked fingernails, matted hair, and calluses on his palms, elbows, and knees. Proof that he'd been doing more crawling than walking. It took a while for him to get over the taste of raw meat, and he was particularly fond of drinking blood, especially from animals. He eventually stayed at the Mother Teresa's home for the destitute and dying in Lucknow in the year 1978. It was there that he got his second name, Pascal. Number 14. Danielle Lero. This feral child suffered from what most might call the worst case of child abuse ever. Danielle, or Danny, spent a large part of her younger years locked up in a house, away from society and other people. For six years, Danielle never once interacted with another human being. How did she end up getting locked in a house for that long? Well, it turns out she has her mother to thank for that. Several times, poor Danielle had been spotted by neighbors who reported spotting a girl who looked like she was starving, locked in a house, staring outside a broken window. The mother, a middle-aged woman who went by the name Michelle Crockett, kept refusing the involvements of social services. And this, nothing was done about it until 2005. When Danielle was found, she was laying on a mold-infested bed, riddled with biting ticks and crawling maggots. The detectives who found her concluded that it was by far the worst case of neglect and child abuse they had ever seen in all their years of service. Danielle was eventually taken in by child services and hospitalized, while her mother only got two years of house arrest. Danielle was later adopted by Bernie and Diane Lero, two parents who wanted a girl and were certain that Danielle was a gift to them from heaven. Number 13. Vanya Yudin Nicknamed the Bird Boy, his story might be one that you just might not be prepared for. Yudin is a boy who can't speak to people at all. But what he lacks in his people skills, he makes up for with his board skills. That's right, he talks to birds. Yudin grew up with his 31-year-old mother at his hometown of Kirovsky of Russia. According to his mother, Yudin was incapable of speaking to people but could only communicate with other birds, of which she had a lot of. Even though she never physically abused him, neither did she ever starve him. She never spoke to him, claiming that every time she tried, he just chirped to her. And when it seemed as though she wasn't understanding him, he'd start moving his hands around like a winnowing bird. A strange ailment where the sufferer prefers to communicate with animals rather than people. According to reports, Yudin was first taken to an asylum, but would later be transferred to a center of psychological care. Number 12. Ukrainian Dog Girl Oksana Oleksandrivna 
Malaya was born on the 4th of November 1983 in the village of Nova Blagovishchenka in Hornostavia Ryan, Kherson Oblast of the Ukrainian SSR. While growing up, when she was only three years old, she was abused by her alcohol father who later abandoned her. With no one to look after her, Malaya lived with dogs, and soon after even started behaving more like one, when she was found and rescued by social services. They found that she barked like a dog, walked around on all fours, and even took care of her hygiene just like a dog. And if you've ever owned dogs, then you know that there's pretty much nothing hygienic about it. She was taken to a foster home for mentally disabled children, located at Barable. There she went through years of therapy to help her recover all she'd lost. It was mostly successful, with Malaya learning to speak and even learning to suppress her dog side. She started working at a farm where she milks cows. So all's well that ends well. Do you guys know of any feral children not on this list so far? Leave a comment if I end up mentioning them as we go on. Number 11. A Toddler Kept Alive by Cats Here is a boy whom some might argue shares a specific psionic link with cats, and given the things that happened to him involving cats, it would be hard to argue with them. The boy's case has been compared to Mowgli's by several people who know his story. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. When the boy was found, he was being protected by either different cats. The nights were always cold in the gutters where he slept, and under normal circumstances, the cold would have killed him only after a few nights of sleeping like that. But, and get this, the cats somehow knew that the boy was feeling cold, so they'd huddle up to him and cover him with their own body sharing their warmth with him. During the day when the boy was too weak to even stand, the cats would go out and forage for him, dropping food scraps for him to eat. The boy was found by a woman who noticed the unusual crowd of cats at a canal in the Christ King district of the city. As the woman got closer, they hissed and spat at her, not wanting her to come near the boy they were protecting. He was rescued by policewoman Alicia Lorena Lingvist. Number 10. Victor, the Wild Boy of Aviron Victor's case is one that's known by many. As far as feral children went, Victor's story is perhaps the most documented one there is till date. So chances are that you might know of this feral child. If it turns out that you do and there's something about him that I'm not able to cover in this video, then do let me know in the comments section. I'm curious to learn more about this fascinating child. Most things concerning Victor's personal life are mostly unknown, but he was estimated to have been born in the year 1788. The boy ran from home after he'd been mostly neglected by his alcoholic father. In the wild, he kept fending for himself, living amongst the inhabitants of the forest. He had been spotted and captured eight separate times, but always kept escaping. He eventually emerged by his own volition and was adopted by a young physician who went by the name of Jean-Marc Gaspard Itard who was also the one who gave the boy his new name, Victor. The physician tried to see if he could teach Victor how to learn the things that a boy ought to know, applying several teaching techniques. According to his tests, Itard broke new records in the education of the developmentally delayed. Number 9. Ugandan Monkey Boy If I were to make an educated guess as to where the idea for Tarzan and George of the Jungle came from, I'd say it was from this boy's story. It also helps that his case as a feral child is also well documented as well. John Sabunya, often referred to as Monkey Boy, spent three years of his life while he was still a child growing up, with the monkeys being his closest company. John was born in Uganda during the time the Civil War was underway. His violent father, who participated in the conflicts instigated by the rebels, brutally murdered his mother. Whether poor John fled for his life or was abandoned, the boy was all alone in the wild. That was until he was approached by a family of Chlorocebius sabius monkeys. They presented him with foods and allowed him to follow them. They taught him many different things such as how to climb trees and hunt for his own food. He slept on banana leaves and according to some accoutrements, he never drank any water. This means that he must have been hydrating from the food he ate alone. So yeah, pretty much like Tarzan and George of the Jungle. The boy was found by a woman in a nearby village and was rescued. He had many health issues such as malnutrition and hypertrichosis, both of which he eventually left him. Number 8. Dina Sanishar Dina Sanishar's case might be one of the most similar cases to the fictional character Mowgli. On February in the year 1867, a group of hunters found him in a cave in Bulanshahar, Uttar Pradesh in India. When they found him, he wasn't alone. Dina had made some furry friends and they were anything but cuddly. Dina was found amongst wolves whom he'd spent most of his years with, learning to act like them, hunt like them, and survive like them. So it was no surprise when he was brought to an orphanage that he started to behave more like an animal than a human. 
He preferred raw meat and walked on all fours. He couldn't speak but communicated on those rare occasions when he felt like it by making a couple of wolf-like sounds. It was at the orphanage that Dina got the name Sanichar because he arrived on a Saturday. He lived amongst humans for 20 years but could never learn to speak and could never properly recover from his impairment. He picked up a nasty habit of smoking excessively and ended up dying of tuberculosis. So maybe not as Mowgli-like, but hey, this is reality, right? Number 7. Lobo Wolf Girl of Devil's River If Mowgli turned out to be a girl and not a boy, he'd probably end up as the Wolf Girl of Devil's River. Much like Mowgli, her story is one that could leave anyone who hears it in great wonder. After her father, John Dent died after being struck by lightning while searching for help of his laboring wife, and her mother dying soon after her birth at the clawed paws of Lobo Wolves. The Mexicans who had come to aid her delivery concluded that the child was also dead, eaten by the wolves. Just like that, in a single stormy night, the Dent family all died, but that was far from the case. Stories of sightings of a naked, hairy girl moving with a pack of wolves became very rampant. Not long after, almost everyone in the village could claim to have seen her at least once. They set out to capture her and found her on the third day of the search. She had fought back in an animalistic way, trying to escape and return to the wolves. She was locked in a room where she would make loud howling and screaming noises that attracted the wolves at dusk, forcing the cowboys to fend them off, leaving her with enough time to escape. Even till this day, no one knows for certain the fate of the wolf girl of Devil's River. Number 6. Sujit Kumar And we've reached that part of this list where things surprise you with how surprisingly unpleasant they get. This here is the case of what might be the worst child abuse ever recorded in Fiji. So bad even that the victim only ever got to behave like an actual human being when he turned 32. This is the story of Sujit Kumar, the boy who spent most of his life living with chickens. His father had been murdered while his mother had committed suicide. With both parents gone, he was taken in by his grandfather who would lock him in the room where he kept his chickens. Sujit was only six at the time and that's how he lived from that age onward. Things finally changed when he was found in the middle of the road and was taken to the Samabula old people's home, where he displayed violent tendencies and was tied to the bed as a result. Sujit behaved much like a chicken, pecking at his food and placing his hands to his sides like there were chicken wings. He was finally taken in by a woman named Elizabeth who had lost her husband. Even though he were already well past 30, Sujit Kumar might as well have been a little child, learning to act like a human being for the first time since he was six. Number 5. Leopard Boy A peculiar case of a boy who spent his time with the infamously deadly leopard for years, without it eating him, but choosing to take care of him instead. This is the case of the Leopard Boy, and it's proof that not everything with long fangs think with their teeth. At least not most of the time, maybe. All by himself, he wouldn't have lasted long in the jungle, but he was found by a female leopard. Rather than hurt him, she chose to take her with him. We can only assume that the reason the boy survived that long was due to the leopardess taking care of his as though he was their own child. This hypothesis holds more credibility when one considers how the boy was found. A hunter found and shot the leopardess shortly after he found her nest. In it were some leopard cubs and sure enough the leopard boy himself. He was brought back to his parents who were happy to finally be with their missing child, but it wasn't easy for him to return to the ways of a human. He hinted fowls attacked anyone who came too close and it was just downright feral, no pun intended. He was able to recover some of his humanity, but he ended up getting blind from cataracts, although it wasn't due to the time he spent in the wild. Number 4. Alex the Dog Boy Alex is another strong contender for the position of the real-life Mowgli. Only rather than wolves and a talking tiger, we've got dogs and said 15 of them too. The boy was abandoned by his abusive parents when he was only a few months old. It is believed that he was suckled by a female dog and he was taken care of by the rest of the pack. Despite everything he had been through alongside the dogs, it seemed Alex still retained some sense of his humanity by the time he was found. He could speak a bit of Spanish and could even draw. All things that someone who had lost their humanity, true feral children, wouldn't be able to do. So rather than raise him, he simply learned to live amongst them, scavenging for food on the streets and in dustbins. To put it simply, the dogs were like the boy's family. The way the boy got captured was because he tried to escape from the authorities by jumping into the Pacific Ocean to try and dog paddle away. However, the water was far too cold for such a skinny boy. It immediately sent him into shock. Fortunately, he was rescued before he drowned. He was treated for hypothermia and was diagnosed with severe malnutrition, of which he was also treated for before being released to a children's welfare home. 
Number 3. Tippi Dagger And here's a girl who could easily be considered as the female version of the well-known George of the Jungle. Now, while she might not be swinging from vine to vine, bellowing at the top of her lungs, but just like the fictional character, much of the wildlife of Africa are her friends, would make you to even doubt if it were real or just a sequel to the last George of the Jungle movie. Although granted, not many of the animals in the photos are actually wild, but orphans that grew with and were raised by humans. But still, be it in the wild or in confinement, animals will still behave like animals. So it's no small feat that Tippy is able to literally make out with snakes ride elephants and ostriches, and play tag with a leopard. She's befriended all manner of animals, from crocodiles to giraffes, to a northern greater galago, a banded mongoose, a meerkat, a baby zebra, and even a chameleon. Tippy must be really good at making friends as it's not just with animals. She's also became friends with the Bushmen and Himba people of Nambia. Number 2. Ivan Mishikov this Russian citizen is most notable for being a feral child who spent two years of his childhood living with dogs. Ivan was born on the 6th of May in the year 1992. His tragic story began when he was four. He was constantly being abused by his mother and her alcoholic boyfriend. Things got so unbearable for the boy that he up and fled from his home, desperate to escape the unpleasantness of the people who were supposed to be taking care of him. Now alone in the wild, Ivan had no means of fending for himself. Somehow he knew to gain the trust of the pack of dogs he found by providing them with the food he managed to get rather than keeping it all to himself. Gaining these new allies, Ivan was often protected by them. It wasn't long before he found himself leading the pack. He'd been captured at least three times by the authorities, but thanks to the assistance of his pack, he was able to escape. However, in the year 1998, he was finally captured by Moscow police. His pack separated from him with the use of bait. Since he'd been living with the dogs for only two years, it wasn't too difficult for him to relearn to live like a person. Number 1. Sasha T. And that brings us to the last entry on this list. I hope you've been learning a lot so far. If so, then do smash that like button. And if this is the kind of content that you like to see, then hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell, so that you can always know whenever I upload a new video. Now, let's get back to it. It seems the last entry of this list is once again from Russia. The boy named Sasha T didn't grow up living amongst his parents, who just so happened to be in the same house he was in. How could this be? Well, they preferred to have their child locked up in the same room they kept their sheep. Probably couldn't be too bothered by the lad. So rather than see his parents every time he got up from the cold, dirty floor, he called his bed. Sasha T instead saw goats. They never taught him anything, how to talk, how to read and write, or even how to potty nor eat. Thankfully, he was found and rescued by child services and taken to a hospital where he was treated for severe malnutrition. That's it with this list of children raised by animals. Which one of these cases have you heard of before? Which did you find to be the most unfortunate case? Also, check out some of our other cool stuff showing up on the screen right now. Until next time.